what do you say weekend warriors are you guys ready to smoke a turkey i know i am welcome back and if you're new here my name's mike i'm gonna show you a tried and true way to smoke a turkey the type of smoker you have doesn't matter so much it's more the temperature we're gonna cook to and the preparation so today i'm using my vertical pellet smoker but you could use an offset smoker you could use a traeger you could use a pit boss doesn't matter at all. And the other thing you want to think about is what are you going to brine your turkey in? You could make your own homemade. So you would start with equal parts sugar and salt and mix it in water. I really like to use this Cosmos uh, turkey brine. If this is sold out, I'll put links down below, but if it's sold out, Matt Pittman with Meat Church Barbecue also has a brine that I've tried uh, that's really good. What I like about this, you just add it to the water, mix it, drop the turkey in, and you're done. And then of course you're gonna need a turkey. So this is about a 15 pound turkey. I don't like to go much larger than this. I'd rather do two smaller turkeys if I have to feed a lot of people. One of the reasons I like two smaller turkeys is now you're gonna get four turkey drumsticks, four breasts, four thighs, and they cook quicker. This turkey came frozen and it took about three days to defrost in the refrigerator. If you can get a fresh turkey, then that's awesome. This one is not, and it's already been brined. So I get a lot of questions about that. Why would you brine a turkey that's already brined? Well, once you put it into this mixture, it's gonna draw out what the factory put in there. And then as it brines overnight, it's gonna take in the flavors that I want in there. That's why I do it, it does work. And the last thing you're gonna need is some kind of a container to brine the turkey in. You could do it in a plastic bag. I have the briner bucket. So this thing will hold up to a 25 pound turkey. The way it works is it has these notches inside of the bucket. You put the turkey in and then there's a plastic retainer. You push it down, then you'll turn it between those notches. It locks it in, keeping the turkey submerged. And then I even bought this smaller one that I like to do my chicken wings in. Sometimes I'll do a little pork butt in there. Really helpful. So obviously you're gonna need a refrigerator that you can put this in. If you only have one refrigerator, that's gonna be kind of tough. What you could do there is put some ice packs in this to keep it cold and at a safe temperature overnight. I'm fortunate to have a refrigerator in my basement. That's where this will go once we get the turkey in there. So let's talk turkey. There's a couple things we're gonna do. You're gonna get a bag of giblets, save those. I've got a link down below to the video I did last year showing you how to make a turkey stock and gravy. You're also gonna use the neck bone to make that stock, so you wanna save that. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this bit of skin that was around the neck, and we're gonna add that to our bowl and use that for stock. Lots of flavor in there. Spin this. The instant read thermometer, you can just take that out. And we'll come this way and any bit of this extra fat that I don't want, that's gonna go into my stock pot. All right, that's looking good. I'm leaving the leg holder on, it's safe to do so. If you wanna take it off, by all means, go ahead. I just find it convenient for picking this guy up. And now for the brine, just tear the bag open, dump it right in, you'll use the whole bag and I've done this before, you need about two gallons of water. Now for the water. Give it a good mix. And then let's go ahead and drop Big Bird in for a bath. <laughs> Just get him down here, make sure he's submerged. Looks like a perfect fit. And now we'll cover him up. Just go down, one notch, turn. Now that's locked in place. The turkey's completely covered. We don't have to come in in the middle of the night and flip this thing around. Throw the lid on here. And this is gonna go in my refrigerator, and now we can get started on one of the side dishes that we're gonna cook the day before. And the side dish is au gratin potatoes. We always give credit where credit's due, so this comes from Chef Jean-Pierre. I will put a link to his video. 
It's almost exactly the way he did it. The biggest difference, I'm doing mine in the smoker. Smoker set to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And those are the kind of recipes I look for to do in my smoker. Anything that you can do in your oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect for the smoker. You're gonna get a little bit of smoke flavor without overpowering it. So let's get right into this, you're gonna love it. The first thing we need is two cups of heavy whipping cream, which is also 16 ounces or one pint. And we're gonna get this into about a medium high pot. And we wanna bring this up, warm it up. And then we're gonna to start to melt some cheese in there. And to that, I'm gonna add six ounces of cheddar cheese. This is block cheddar. Instead of shredding it, I've just cut it into some thin strips. Three ounces of goat cheese. It's really good stuff. And I'm gonna mix it, and we're gonna let this go until that cheese melts and it's real nice and smooth. About a medium low heat at this point. And while that's going, let me introduce you to the most dangerous tool I have in my kitchen. It's a mandolin. Blade right here, we're gonna run the potatoes across it. I've got it on the second setting. So these are gonna be very thin. You wanna be careful. Use the guide so you're not cutting off your fingers. And it's got some teeth on here to hold it. And I'm doing long strips. So let me cut a couple and I'll show you what they look like. So right here, this might be a little bit too thick. So I'm gonna go back to one. We'll see how that looks. Yep, much better. Paper thin, paper thin. So it's four potatoes and one sweet potato that I'm gonna do this with. Very nice and easy. Okay, and then last, but certainly not least, the sweet potato. And it's the same exact process. Just makes real quick work. All right, so next up, three egg yolks, some nutmeg to taste. I'm gonna go about a teaspoon. A little bit of salt, just a little bit of pepper. And I'm gonna add some of the hot cream and cheese mixture slowly. We're gonna temper these eggs. And then it's gonna go back in the pot. And I'll just give it one last mix. Keep it warm over here on the side. All right, we're getting close to wrapping this up. Quarter size baking pan. Spray it down with some butter. And now you start with a layer of your very thin potatoes. Gonna lay these out. And then we take just a little bit of our cheese custard. Get it on there. And then I'm gonna go with another layer and as I do, I'll smooth this out. Just push down, it'll work itself out. Next layer of sauce. And then we're gonna come in with our sweet potatoes. So two layers of regular potato, followed by a sweet. And I'm pressing down to distribute that sauce. Thank you. 
and now we're gonna top it off with some shredded Parmesan. And then, if you wanna keep your smoker clean, you need to put this on top of a pan so as it boils over, the pan underneath will catch it. So we got that. Let's get it in the smoker. And just as a reminder, I've got it set to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm using hickory pellets. Put this right about the center rack. No water in the pan. We're just gonna get the door closed. And this will probably take about two hours to get done. There are still quite a bit of potatoes left in here, so we'll find something to do with these for dinner tonight. I just couldn't fit them all in here. And this is a recipe you want to try to do the day before if you can. It's kind of like a lasagna. It's better the next day after it's had time to cool and rest. You'll get better slices. But if you don't want to wait and you don't care about presentation, you could do it the same day. I'm doing it the day before though. So we're going to come back in about two hours and see how it looks. All right, we are at exactly two hours. It's just about to start to rain. Let me get this open so we can take a look. Woo, look at that. Nice brown crust. That Parmesan cheese is looking good. Now here's what you're looking for. Take a knife, go right in the center to make sure it's cooked. If it goes through without any effort, that's done. So I'll just check it in a couple spots. We are good. So here's what's gonna happen. This is gonna come out, it's gonna sit on the countertop until it cools down a little bit, and then it's gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. Then tomorrow we can reheat this, and we'll be back tomorrow to get that turkey in here. And here we are 24 hours later. So this guy has been in the refrigerator. I took it out and rinsed it off, and then I patted it dry with some paper towels, and then you let it sit in the refrigerator for a couple hours to let that skin air dry. That'll help you get a little bit more crispy of a skin. And then depending on your smoker, there's a couple different ways to do this. So if you're using a vertical smoker, you could lay it flat on the rack. I've done that before, but I actually prefer to hang it. I'll show you how to set that up in a second. If you don't have a vertical, any kind of a beer can chicken rig like this will work. The idea is to have that bird sit upright. It provides a little bit better of an even cook. You're gonna need a way to monitor the temperature of a turkey. I'm using the meter wireless meat probes. And then as far as putting a seasoning on the outside, we don't need a whole lot. There was a ton of flavor from that brine, but I do still like to put a little bit on the outside. You have a couple ways to get it to stick. Uh, one is the old school Pam cooking spray. You spray it on the bird, then you season it. This works great, but you'll find during the cook, you're gonna have to keep opening that door and applying more spray uh, to help crisp up the skin. I like to use nowadays mayonnaise. It's thicker, it doesn't dry out as easy, and I can actually mix the rub into the mayonnaise, rub it all over the bird, and then I don't have to worry about opening up that door and letting out all the heat. And then use your favorite barbecue rub. I'm gonna use this Swamp Venom from Dizzy Pig. It has a Cajun style flavoring to it. And I wanna thank Troy Berger from the Weekend Warrior Facebook group who sent this to me as a gift. I appreciate it, this is good stuff. And so a couple things I'm gonna do before I even season it is I'm gonna go ahead and put in my meat probes. Thickest part of the breast without touching the bone. And then I'm gonna come over on this side and let's go into that dark meat. And get that down into the thigh. And then the way to hang this, this bottom end, the holder, is gonna go down here. So what I'm gonna do is take the skewer end Put it through the leg holder, find its way out the other side, and then this just screws on. A couple turns. And now that'll sit nice and snug. And the reason I'm doing all this in advance, sometimes if you do it after you put your rub and the mayo and the spray on, 
you mess it all up and it's not as even. So we take care of that first. Now I'm gonna get these paper towels out of here. And now for the mayo and the rub. We go about two tablespoons. And then we can always sprinkle some more on after the fact. And a couple tablespoons of mayo. It really doesn't take that much. Mix that all in. And now you have a seasoned mayonnaise, which is gonna allow you to spread your seasonings evenly across the bird. From here, it's simple. Just get it on there. Rub it all in. You don't have to worry about getting under the skin. I think, as I mentioned before, all of your brine from the night before has already done that. But get it between the legs, all the little crevices. And if you have any left over, put it up inside of the cavity as well. Now, of course, you could stuff the cavity with stuffing if you like. I honestly prefer not to, but uh, it's your choice. Your turkey, your rules. All right, I'm gonna flip it over. And then we'll get that backside too. And then this is where you can come back and just lightly give it a little bit extra. It's gonna help with the color and just a little bit more flavor. And then as a final touch, take the wing tip and you can just fold it back like that. That's gonna keep it in nice and tight to the body and help prevent it from burning. It might burn anyways, but just one little step. Doesn't take a lot of effort. Okay, so the smoker is up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's kind of the sweet spot. You get just enough smoke without making your turkey taste like a ham. It cooks a little bit quicker. You get a little bit better skin. And I did decide to use this uh, pellet blend by Traeger. It's got maple, hickory, and they have some rosemary uh, sprinkled in there too. That sounded really interesting to me. This also came with uh, a rub and a brine kit, which I'm not gonna use. Maybe I'll use it in a future video, but I did put these on the smoker. I'm looking forward to seeing if we can pick up any of that rosemary flavor. But other than that, let's get this bird in the smoker. I'll show you how I got it set up. So what you'll see here is I have a rack in the very top position. That's what I'm gonna hang the bird from. Down here, right on top of the water pan, I have another rack just to hold this foil pan. There's no water in the drip pan, and this is just to catch any drippings and to keep my smoker clean. And then here's our bird. I'm going to have the breast meat facing out to start. The back of the smoker is always just a little bit hotter than the front, just like any oven. And I'll try and get this, there we go. That's where these uh, leg holders came in handy. It's gonna help stabilize that bird. And I've got this hook going across the crossbar. So it's got plenty of strength to hold that up. So that's pretty much it for my setup. If you wanted to use the beer can chicken rack, uh, you would have your rack, you know, about here. Your turkey would be facing the other way, but standing upright. Or just put it flat on the, on the grate. It'll turn out good that way too. So let's get this closed. And we're gonna let the smoker do its thing. Safe cooking temperature, 165 Fahrenheit in the breast. You can go all the way up to 180 in the dark meat, especially on those drumsticks. You wanna take that up a little bit higher to break down some of that connective tissue. But we're just gonna let this go until it gets close. So maybe when it gets up to about 150 on the internal, I'm gonna come out and crank up the heat on the smoker. That's gonna help crisp up that skin. Then it's gonna be time to eat, I can't wait. All right, we're about two and a half hours into this cook. We're at 124 degrees in the breast, and it's saying we have about an hour and 39 minutes left, which may or may not be accurate. It's just a guess. So what we're gonna do is pop this open. By the way, very nice, subtle 
rosemary smell coming out of the uh, stack and the pellets. I don't know if it'll translate into any flavor, but it smells good. And the bird is looking good, as you can see. It's taking on a real nice color. What I'm gonna do is rotate the bird so we get a nice even cook. And you might need two hands to do this. Just gonna grab it. Rotate it so now the back is in the front and the breast meat is in the back. So we're gonna come back probably in about an hour and then we'll think about uh, turning up the heat depending on how the skin's doing. Right now it's doing really good. But that's it guys, this is pretty simple. And we'll be back in a little bit. And we're at the four hour mark. So in the breast, we're at 153 degrees Fahrenheit. And then in the dark meat, we're at 167, which is not surprising. That's usually always ahead of the breast meat. So at this point, I'm just gonna open it to show you what it looks like. And then, I'm gonna crank the heat up. I mean, that is the perfect color for a turkey. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see all the drippings down there, which we've saved. That's gonna make for a good gravy later. So what I'm gonna do is crank this up to 350 until it reaches an internal of 165 in the breast. And then we're gonna get it out and let it rest. While it's resting, that's when I'm gonna reheat my au gratin potatoes that we made yesterday. You could do it right in your smoker at 275 degrees for about 20 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do while the turkey rusts. All right, so I'm gonna come back uh, right when I take this out. And here it is, five hours total cook time. That includes me turning that temperature up to 350. It's finally done. Like I said, I'm gonna let it rest and I'm gonna reheat my potatoes in here. I'm not gonna show that part, but uh, let's get this off of here so you can see how it looks. Backside's looking spot on. Let me lay this down. Look at that beauty. So here's a tip. Do not take out your temperature probe now. You wanna wait, let it rest. If you take it out now, you're gonna get all the juice to come out with it. It'll come out like a fire hose. Give you the spin. And that thing is perfectly cooked. So once it rests, and I've got a couple pieces cut up, we'll come back and show you the finished product. I can't wait. There we go, a piece with the skin. It's got a nice crunch to it. Let me try a bite. Oh my God, that is so good. If you like Cajun rubs, a little spicy, that's good. A little bit of pink smoke ring right underneath the skin layer. Fall apart tender. And just a quick show of the au gratin potatoes. Hope you can see that in the different layers with the sweet potato in there. This is decadent. We've already tried it. It is amazing. One of the better things I've ever made as a side dish. All right, there you have it, smoked turkey. If you guys wanna see a couple different ways to do this, I'm gonna put some uh, end screen cards up. Check that out. Last year's video, I show you how to make a sausage stuffing, cranberry sauce. Turkey is almost exactly the same. Check out the links below and have a great Thanksgiving.